Hello everyone, welcome to Coding Decoded. My name is Sanjay Tudeja. I am working as Technical Architect SD4 at Adobe and here I present weekly contest 299. The problem that I will be solving today is count number of ways to place houses and if you are interested in the rest of the solutions of the contest, those are mentioned in the description below so do check them out. But in this video, I will focus the attention on to 2320. So here in this question, we are given 2, in, uh, two into n plots where houses are to be placed. We need to identify the number of ways in which all these houses can be placed such that no two houses are adjacent to each other on the same side of the street. So this is very important to understand that the constraint says no two houses should be adjacent to each other on the same side of the street. On different side of the streets, there can be opposite houses placed. So here they have provided us with an example and again there is another case for n equals to 1 and another one for n equals to 2. The answer comes out to be 9 and here in this case the answer comes out to be 4. So I will be walking you through these test cases as well as the algorithm to go about it, why the presentation, so let's quickly hop on to it. Also in case if you have any doubt understanding this question or if you want to ask anything from me in general, please feel free to drop a message on the telegram group or the discord server of Coding Decoded. Both the links are stated in the description as well. Lead code 2320, count number of ways to place houses. So as per the question, we are given a street and along both the sides of the street, the upper and the lower one, there are n plots. And let us me just highlight those vacancies. What do we need to do? We need to place houses on these n plots such that as per the question, no two adjacent houses should be placed on the same side of the street. So what does it mean? That there should not be any configuration wherein the ho one house is placed over here and the other one is again placed over here. Although the question says that it can be placed opposite to each other. So if one is placed over here, it is allowed to be placed on the opposite side here as well. So we can have a house here and we can have a here as well. However, this configuration where two houses are adjacently placed is an invalid one. So this can't be a valid configuration. So let's hypothetically assume that for a second, the number of ways to place houses on the bottom side turns out to be A and the number of houses to be placed on the top side comes out as B. So the total number of ways in which the houses can be placed across these two streets would be in turn equal to A into B. Pretty straightforward. Now the problem reduces to identifying the number of ways in which the houses can be placed along a single street where we have n plots in total. So let's focus our attention onto a very basic sub problem where you are given n house n vacancies and you need to place elements onto these n vacancies such that no two houses or elements are placed adjacent to each other. Does this remind you of any problem in the past? For all those who have been following coding decoded may know that the, this is exact same problem as house robber 1 is which forms the core of dynamic programming. So let's hypothetically assume that we have already calculated the answer for n minus 1 position. We have the answer and since I have already told that we will be using dynamic programming for it and we have we have this answer for n minus 1 location what we are interested in we are interested in finding out the answer for nth location and since we have the answer for n minus 1 location we also have the answer for the previous ones for example n minus 3 n minus 2 so let me just write those as well. Now comes the concern what would be the answer for the nth location. It's really simple. In the first case, what we will do, we will consider that we are going to place a house over at this particular location. Uh, so what we will do as per the question, the house cannot be placed from a previous location. So this is not allowed. Therefore, we will pull out the result from n minus 2 location. So what is the result for n minus 2 location? We already have it pre-computed. So first part of the answer would come from n minus 2 location. For that case, when we are placing a house at this particular location, so we have a house in this case at nth location. Where will the second component come from? Let's hypothetically assume the other case for this particular 
location turns out to be that we are not placing a house here that simply means whatever answer we have pre-computed at n minus 1 location gets added on to this one so the total value for dp of n turns out to be dp of n minus 2 plus dp of n minus 1 so this forms the crux of the problem and if you are able to identify this equation your work is done so for each value of n given in the equation we will be identifying dp of n and that simply means we have the values of a and b we will multiply it with each other as a result of which the final equation that turns out to be is dp of n square so this would be the answer because here in this case uh, the values of n are equal so eventually it's a into a rather than a into b this forms the basis of dynamic programming again which is fibonacci series if you carefully analyze this equation now this is nothing new this is an exact same formula of fibonacci moving ahead in case you are unaware of fibonacci and house robber or dynamic programming then i have a solution for the beginners as well so let me just shoot that solution now we, I have already talked about the basic core basic of dynamic programming that is Fibonacci in this video. I am attaching its link in the description below. If you want to testify your learning from this video, then do attempt the house robber problem. And if you carefully observe, then Sri Jeet has stated the same equation that I just talked in the presentation. So he is trying to develop a correlation between Fibonacci and this problem again in C++ which he has stated just here. If you are interested in more problems of dynamic programming, then I have also provided coding decoded SD revision sheet on the topic of dynamic programming. So this one is a must do before interviews. I've also highlighted those problems that are highly asked in interviews. Uh, those are highlighted with double asterisk sign stated in bold. And here you will see the problems are segregated along easy, medium and hard categories. And with each problem, there is a video solution. And I have tried to cover as many permutations that are possible in dp 3d dp 2d dp 1d dp and once you'll go through this video it will give you enough confidence that you are prepared from dp concept for nailing that interview up in case that question comes up with this let's shoot for understanding the coding part as well so as i talked uh, what have i done here i have created the dp array as, and the default value of dp of 0 is 1 dp of 1 is 2 as per the Fibonacci as well we have started the iteration from i equals to 2i is less than equal to n and we build the dp array first and once we have built it for the position n we simply multiply and square this up and don't forget the modulus sign let's try this up accept it uh, the time complexity of this approach is order of n and the space complexity is again order of n and you it can be reduced to constant time over to you guys uh, if you are aware of dynamic programming basics uh, then you will be able to do it and specifically Fibonacci. With this let's wrap up today's session. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did then please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for viewing it. Have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates on Coding Decoded. I will see you tomorrow with another fresh question.